God and I don't think alike. <laughs> so Saturday morning, uh, we started, what is it, 10 or 10.30, Ralph? Was that right? So to my surprise, while Josiah is speaking, and I'm sitting on the end of the in chair, Gabriel Pierce, six feet in front of me, off to my in front right. And um, I don't remember a thing Josiah said after that point. <laughs> And it shocked me. So I thought, you know, can't we wait? (laughs) I have no idea what's going to be said. I never do. I don't think people think through things like this, not just things that happen to me, but other people. You don't go into it saying, I know what's going to be said. You have no clue as what's going to be said. (laughs) I had no clue. So he walks right beside me. Now watch his finger, his hand and his forearm come two inches right past my right eye and point straight to my Bible, which happened to be open to Revelation chapter five for some reason. I don't know why. Revelation chapter five points his finger right at it. It says to me, this is what's happening in real hot time in heaven right now. I immediately was thrown into doubt and unbelief. So I was able to ask questions honorably, politely. So you're telling me (laughs) that in heaven, as you're speaking to me, this is beginning to transpire. Yes. So you're telling me, (laughs) sorry guys, but uh, you know, I know I'm gonna have to say it sooner or later and later is better for me than sooner. So you're telling me that a bride is coming out to be made ready. Yes. Because I know that these things can't be begun without the bride coming out to be made ready. I know that. We know that, right? We've been talking about it. So uh, he went on uh, to say other things to me. I'm not, I don't really want to share it. (laughs) So somewhere in this, if the Lord makes me share it, I will, but I don't want to. I figure Revelation 5 is good enough. (laughs) So in Revelation chapter 5, as you will note, I want to put, what I believe to be necessary boundaries around what I'm saying. Revelation 5, let's look at it, starting with verse 1. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. So God the Father has this scroll, this book in his hand. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's how Christ is first addressed in this, the lion. Be fitting as to what's about to happen, right? when he breaks these seals. He breaks the seals and it's over, folks. There's no going back. I know that. Sure you know that. I'm, you know, I know God speaks in absolutes. I'm uncomfortable with such an absolute myself. You may be uncomfortable out there. I'm uncomfortable. 
You know, I will say it because the Lord makes me say it, and that's the reason I will. So I told the Lord when all this happened, make me. Because I don't, I'm, I'm not being honorary towards the Lord. I'm being a realist. You know, I don't want my thoughts involved in it. I've said things through the years that have great cost to them, particularly in the church. And so, you know, you get older, I'm 62 and a half, you get older and you realize I don't have the zealousness of youth anymore, nor the strength, nor anything else. <laughs> and so uh, I'm not anxious to say uh, what the Lord wants me to say until he wants me to say it, and there's boundaries. And so uh, what I, maybe I would have missed in my earlier years of timing, I don't want to miss ever again. And so I want to stay within the boundaries of God's timing of release. So, um, <clears throat> so the, welder, the elder is saying, don't weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed the root of David has triumphed, he is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if, so the lion and the lamb are one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we want to know him as he is, both as lion and lamb. So I want you to picture the lamb a little different for a moment. You know, we have these concepts in Western culture of Christianity of this cuddly little snuggly lamb, right? All pretty. The purpose for that lamb